Hey guys and welcome to the third part of making a MailDisk 2 clone. In this part we are going to be looking at database stuff. We are going to be including support for DB Evolutions, we are adding support for eBeans and we are creating our first entities. Okay, so let's give a look at how to use Evolutions. Enable evolutions, okay. So we need to add this to the library dependencies. So we go over here. Because it's part of the database support, I place it over here altogether. What else? And this is not needed. Blah, blah, blah. Configurations, what do we need for configurations? Let's see. Okay, we need this for our configurations. Database evolutions enabled true. Save. Let's restart the Play Framework application. And that is because we have modified the basically the dependencies of the build. One eternity later. Let's refresh and it's working. Okay. And now let's add the even support oh okay okay so it was extracted from this place so it's an outside module now okay And this fork is what is recommended. Let's give it a look. We want to use this plugin because this is the version that we are using for play. Well, it's 281. So this is the latest plugin. So this is the one that we are going to be using. Let's disregard this for the time being. Okay. As we need to add this plugin. So that is done not on this build SBT, but inside project. We have this plugins SBT and we add it here. Let's add the correct one, zero two, like this. Save. Then we have all these configurations. I'm going I'm just gonna pass copy paste everything over there and we'll trim out what we don't need which is almost everything inside here we don't need so save as we leave default models that's good so let's create that package package models like this settings this is not a database store Let's delete this. Let's disable L2 caching. We don't need those. Document store, we remove this. And we don't have extra configs either, so we'll remove that as well. Let's see? What am I missing? Oh, clustering. We don't need that either. So, move this. DB migration. I don't know what this is, but I'm pretty sure we don't need it either. So let's just remove it. And we've got even. 
can be good. I, I think. I think that this is basically it. Let's give it a look. Oh, I need to restart this. One eternity later. Mm, no. Does this have anything to do with stuff that we are doing? No. Nope. Okay. Well, there's only one way to know if everything is working. Oh, wait a second. Inside here, I also need to add that module. So play e beam like this. Let's restart this. And let's refresh over here as well. One eternity later. So yeah, that's why it wasn't showing up because I forgot to enable the plugin. And it's taking too long to create the pool for the data source. So there is clearly something that's not working. Let's just wait for it to time out and see what the error was. One eternity later. Oh my god, this is taking too long. One eternity later. And here we go. It just exploded. Let's see if we can find out what the problem was. Blah, blah. Okay, yeah, I remember what this is. I've seen this error before. It's due to the language of the database. You might not, this might not happen to you. Let's see. Wait. Yeah, it's the server time zone that we want to set. Okay. Let's go to the applications conf and let's add this configuration and let's rerun and see what happens. This should be a lot faster now. One eternity later. Okay, so a lot faster. But we are lacking Jack's B API implementation. Okay. And this is very annoying. It should it should come with it. But for the evolutions as well. Man. Okay. Evolutions. So we are obviously not the first people in the world to have this problem. Let's add this over here. Man, okay. Replace this. This. So. Okay, all is good. Rerun. It should be working fine now. One eternity later. So we'll close this, and it's working. Perfect. The reason why we see to index calls is because every time I start this, my other browser that I have opened, it, it opens straight away the page. So we got two calls, one from that other browser and another one from here. But if I do it now like this click, you see I only get one call incremented. So that's it. Uh, evolutions is enabled. Uh, events is in the support is already installed and JDBC obviously is also set up. So we are now going to create just an entity to see. So email address like this and we extends model this and we say that's an entity. Okay and he and I'm gonna make it public long ID email. 
address and a public string email address like this. Save. And we refresh, which makes it generate the script that it's needed to evolve the database model, which is basically a create email address table. And this is correct. So we just apply the script. And if we go over here and we do a refresh all, we have that table over here. So edit table. So an email address, which is going to be a big int. Okay, auto increment because it's an ID, it's the primary key, and the email address, which cannot be null. Okay, so now let's look at the diagram again. We have an email address on DB, and the next check that we do is if that email address is confirmed. How is it confirmed? We have this other flow on the side, which we'll look at later, but for the time being, we know that it needs to be confirmed, so it needs to exist and be confirmed. So we'll just create a boolean over there. And we say public boolean email confirmed like so. And when we refresh again, it should ask us to evolve. And we apply the script again. Good. So now we can do that check as well. Let's look at the diagram. And after that, we basically send the email. So we need to create the email support and we show a success page. So what about if the email address is not on DB? If it's not on the database, basically we need to create that entry. So we have that entity, so we can do that already. We need to store the email. So basically the data that got posted to this action, we need to store that and we need to store that if that email address is not on the database and if that email address is not confirmed. So we, in those two cases, we need to store that email data so that we can send it later. So let's look at that now. Let's go to models. We have this email address and then we are going to have a pending email, which is also going to extend from model, which is part of the even package. And it's an entity. Let's annotate that as an entity. And let's create an ID for it. And we are going to make it be a long. So ID ending email. It's the same as we used before, yeah? Yeah, good. So this, and we are going to want to store inside here, what? All the data. So how are we gonna store that data? We are going to want to store this as a JSON structure of sorts. So public JSON node, and we are gonna call this request JSON, like so. Let's import this actually. Import class, that's it. But, and there is a relationship between the pending email and the email address, and it's a many to one relationship. So, many to one and public, and it's the email address, and we're gonna say email address like this. So we got this relationship and we need to do it the other way around as well. So one to many, one to many, public list, because we can have more than one, you know, it's gonna be pending emails, and pending emails list like this. And this is going to be mapped by What's the name of the other field? Email address, okay. Like this. Save. Let's refresh. Now we have a lot more things that need to be created and we are also creating indexes and doing constraints on things. 
So I'll apply the script. So this is going to be a foreign key and all of that, you know, the drill and it, everything gets created automatically. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, uh, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified of the next parts and thank you so much.